In the business and professional world, we receive a lot of cold messages, whether on social media or through email. These messages can often be vague and generic. What do you believe is missing in the professional networking, prospecting, and outreach space? Uh, that's a great question. You know, there, I can't deny the fact that in business, you know, numbers and volume matters, right? I can't deny that. There is, de that is definitely one strategy that someone can undertake. But I know for me, when I think about myself as a consumer, right, receiving those emails, it's really easy for me to just be like, delete, 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 <laughs> and clear out my inbox. But what I think people are craving, especially now a days, especially after the crazy year we had, I think people are, are striving to be seen, to be acknowledged, to connect, and they want, they want honesty, right? People want to connect with other people, not a product. So if you have a brand, if you are your brand, or, you know, if you're, if you're not your brand, let's say something like Nike does a great job of this, where they sell you on like a feeling or a concept or an idea or a way of living. They're not telling you the, this is how we made our shoe. And this is the material we used. And this is how we put it together. Like they're not doing that. So I really think people want to connect and you can't connect with a general message. Like I was saying earlier, people want to to feel seen. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to know who am I speaking with? Maybe you have different types of emails that you're sending to different pieces of your target audience. You know, there's so many ways I'm not a, you know, marketing strategist by any means, but I definitely know that when I have collaborated with people to help me with my business, that's the first thing I tell them is I am not, that is not my game. I'm not up for the, the numbers game and spamming and sending, you know, sending emails to get this. I want people when they see my message in their inbox to be excited to open it be like, oh, Melanie always is, you know, giving me tools that are relevant to right now, or there's something in it for me. It's not always about her selling me something. So I think it's important that we take the time to figure out what is my audience craving? How can I connect with them? I mean, you say this all the time, Rashab, about people connect with, I forget the way you say it, but essentially you say we connect with people's messes, not just like their successes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that you said it perfectly. Yeah, people relate with your messes, not your successes. Exactly. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> remember that. So I, I really think, yeah, because it's so true. I mean, think yeah. about it. We Who wants to, and, and again, it comes, I think about people versus product, like, People want to connect with me, right? People want to connect with you when they're listening to this podcast. They want to know more about you because there's a million podcasts out there. But what is it about you that that they feel connected to? I, so I really think people are are missing that connection. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to do more solo episodes because uh, usually when I do these interviews, it's all about the guest. <laughs> of course. Yeah, of course it is. I'm going to come back and interview you, Rashab. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know... You, we, we talked a lot about how important this is in the world, in, in, in life in general, but specifically here in the entrepreneurial side or professional side. Are there any tips or strategies that you can give anyone without giving too much away what you teach in your workshops? Are there any tips or strategies that you may have for any entrepreneur or, or professional out there that says, you know what, I want to get more meaningful in my connections and my, com and my communication? Ooh, yeah, that's, um, I mean, this is deep work, right? That, yeah. that we're doing, that we're trying to put in a sound bite. But I would say a really pivotal place to start. One thing, something very simple that every listener can do right after this is becoming aware of how we use the words I, we, it, and but. So, there's this language, we call it the language of responsibility in communication studies. So these small words we use every single day, but the way we position them sometimes communicate an intention that perhaps we don't mean to communicate. For example, if you're out networking or you're speaking to your employees, you know, whoever, whatever it is, whatever aspect of your business, if I say, like, for example, this is, it's easier for me to give like relationship examples because I do that so often. If I say, Rashab, you left the dishes again in the sink. Gosh, you're such a slob. Is that going to make you feel good? No. Right. And everything was focused on you. No accountability for how I'm feeling. 
So if I went into that same scenario and I say, let's say you're an employee that's been late consistently for this whole week, right? I can, I could easily be like, Shav, you've been late this whole week. What's your problem? It's not going to cultivate any type of connection or meaningful conversation. But if I say, Hey, Rashab, I've noticed, so I'm giving an observation. I'm not evaluating your behavior. I'm saying, I've noticed you've come in late the past couple of days. That's not really like you. I'm a little worried. How are you doing? Is everything okay? So I'm, I'm making it about how I feel. I'm taking ownership over my feelings by using that word I, right? And then also describing what I'm seeing from you without evaluating. So there's this description versus, versus evaluating that I think is really crucial. And, you know, when it comes to business, we're so quick to evaluate. We're so quick to analyze and offer advice and, you know, really jump in where there's not much listening that's occurring. So if somebody after this podcast really wants to take action, I would say be mindful of the word I and you and how you use it. Because when we say you, it inevitably makes the other person feel like we are placing blame, right? So if we are going to say you, make sure you're describing what you see and not evaluating what you're seeing. And then I would say uh, the word but is also what we hear a lot where I was like, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but. So the moment we say that, it negates everything that the person just said. So we want to focus on things like yes and. Yes, Rashab, I hear your idea for this project and I, I want to give it a, a fair shot. Is it okay if I share with you my concerns? Okay, so I, I'm saying yes, and I'm leaving room for both of us. So that word, I just think the whole phrase, yeah, but we use way too much. And it, and it again, drives disconnection between two people. And I would say the second biggest thing, like I already touched on, is the listening. Uh, there, someone can easily probably Google the different styles of listening. And there are different habits all, uh, as well of listening. So Listening styles, there's a continuum, right? But just to keep it simple, one side of the continuum is very reflective and less directive. I'm not telling you what to do. So if you've ever engaged in silent listening, people sometimes answer their own questions and solve their own problems, right? You have um, paraphrasing where I say, is this what I'm hearing? Is what I'm hearing correct, Rashad? This is what I heard you say. So I'm not telling you what to do, right? But again, I, I, I notice this with a lot of entrepreneurs, and I don't mean to stereotype, and I throw myself under the bus here too, is that we're so quick to give advice or analyze or offer, you know, a, you know, well, according to, you know, your things that you're doing, this is what I'm seeing is wrong with your business. Or if we jump to directive where I'm giving you direction on your life when maybe you didn't even ask for it, right? So I think it's, it's being aware of our listening habits. Because the truth is, we're all really terrible listeners. <laughs> we're not great. Absolutely, yeah. You know, and it's because, like you said, we're bombarded with so much information and, and everybody's grabbing at our attention in the world we live in. So I get it. We seek refuge, you know, to get away from that. But be mindful, again, of those little words that I said. And then your listening styles, I think, are pivotal if you really want to create connection.